This lecture will examine the integumentary system of the human body. This lecture segment, part two of two, will examine the accessory structure of the integument, including hair, exocrine glands, nails, as well as discussing how damage to the integument is repaired. Let's begin with hair. Hair is an accessory structure of the integumentary system. Hair is formed in hair follicles that extend into the dermis or hypodermis, and the hair that is formed from each follicle extends above the surface of the skin. Hair has several functions including providing protection to the scalp, preventing entry into the body, for example, hairs in the nostrils keep debris and other foreign objects out of the respiratory tract. Hair also provides sens sensory perceptions. Each hair follicle has a sensory nerve fiber linked to it that can sense any movement in the hair. Hair also plays a role in expressing emotional states. This is accomplished by the erector pili muscle, a smooth muscle bundle that runs from the papillary dermis to the sheath around each hair follicle. This will be examined momentarily. States such as rage, fear, or cold temperatures can cause the erector pili muscle to contract. This pulls the hair follicle, forcing the hair to stand up, and forms what we know as goosebumps. The color of hair is determined by the form of melanin that's present and the amount produced by melanocytes in the hair papilla. Aging results in less pigment being produced, and therefore hair color often changes to gray or white. Hair itself is composed of three layers of dead keratinized cells. As mentioned, hair follicles are responsible for the formation of hair. The hair papilla is at the base of a hair follicle and is composed of connective tissue along with capillaries and nerves that are present. Here we see the hair papilla. The hair matrix houses the epithelial stem cells that surround the hair papilla. These cells divide and daughter cells push towards the surface of the epidermis, keratinizing as they go. The, keratination, the keratinization of the cells begins about halfway up the hair follicle, so right about here. The portion below this point is known as the hair root and the portion above as the hair shaft. So as these cells divide, they'll travel up, be pushed up, forming the hair, when they reach that boundary between the hair root and the hair shaft, they'll go ahead and begin to keratinize. And as they keratinize, that hair shaft forms, and the hair shaft is what we see extending above the surface of the skin. This cross-section of a hair follicle demonstrates the three layers of the hair, the cuticle, the cortex, and the medulla. So here we can see the cuticle of the hair, represented here, okay, the cortex of the hair will be found here, and then the medulla of the hair will be the center of that hair shaft. The wall of the hair follicle and the connective tissue sheath that surrounds it is also shown in this diagram. And then the connective tissue sheath that surrounds the entirety of the structure. Let's talk a little bit about the exocrine glands of the skin. Both sebaceous and sweat glands are exocrine glands that are accessory organs of the integument. Sebaceous glands are oil glands. Their secretion is oily, and a lipid, and it is released into the hair follicles or onto the skin. Sebaceous glands exhibit holocrine secretion, that is, the secretion builds up in the cell, and then the cell bursts and dies, releasing the secretion. This secretion, known as sebum, serves as a lubricant and an antibacterial agent. Sebaceous follicles discharge sebum directly onto the skin. They are found on the face, the back, the chest, the nipples, and the external genitalia.
Sweat glands are also exocrine glands found in the integumentary system. Epocrine sweat glands secrete sweat onto hair follicles through necrocrine secretion. So the name apocrine sweat gland is a misnomer. These glands are found in the armpits, nipples, and pubic regions and become more active at puberty. Miracrine sweat glands are also referred to as eccrine sweat glands. These glands secrete watery sweat directly onto the skin with the palms of the hands and the soles of the feet having the highest numbers of these glands. These glands that produce the sweat are involved in perspiration. Perspiration is the process of evaporation of sweat that helps cool the body. So here we see one of those miracrine sweat glands. And here's that duct and that pore that's going to release that sweat onto the surface and allow for that perspiration. The structure of a nail is shown in this diagram. Nails are accessories of the integument that help protect the fingers and the toes. The nail body is composed of dense keratinized cells, seen here. The nail bed is the deeper level of epithelium covered by the nail body and can be seen here. The nail root is where the nail is produced and it is covered by the cuticle, a layer of stratum corneum that folds over the nail. So here we see the cuticle in this diagram here and then that cuticle here. The lunula refers to this crescent shape that we see at the base of the nail or the root of the nail. When the skin is damaged, it has the ability to regenerate. Stem cells of the epithelium and connective tissues are able to undergo cell division and provide replacement cells for the epidermis and dermis. The process of skin repair has four steps. Scab formation, tissue granulation, scab removal, and scar formation. After an injury occurs, mast cells will trigger the process of inflammation. A scab or blood clot forms within a few hours. Cells of the stratum basale begin dividing to form new epidermal cells to replace the ones that have been damaged or lost. Macrophages and other phagocytic cells begin cleaning up debris from the damaged cells. Fibroblasts and connective tissue stem cells begin to divide and aid in the repair of the dermis. Fibroblasts produce collagen and are supplied by capillaries that increase blood flow to the region. The network of blood, the blood clot, the fibroblasts, and capillaries is known as granulation tissue. As healing occurs, the clot breaks down and circulation to the area decreases. The scar tissue forms and differs from the original tissue in several ways. It has more collagen fibers, fewer blood vessels, and any glands, nerves, and muscle cells damaged in the injury are replaced by this new fibrous tissue. So while the integument can repair itself, it will not be able to restore completely its original structure after an injury. Burns are another type of injury that can harm the integument. Burns can be caused by chemicals, heat, radiation, and electrical shock. The severity of a burn depends on the depth of the burn into the tissue and the total amount of area that has been affected. This table summarizes the characteristics of first, second, and third degree burns. In a first degree burn, we see that superficial cells of the epidermis are killed. Injury can also occur to the deeper layers of epidermis, such as the papillary and the papillary dermis. The appearance will be inflamed and the burn will feel tender. In a second degree burn, superficial and deeper cells of the epidermis and the, or the dermis may be affected. 
the damage may extend into the reticulator of the dermis but many accessory structures are uninfected here we'll have the appearance of blisters and the sensations will be very painful in a third degree burn all epidermal and dermal cells will be killed there will be injury to the hypodermis and the deeper tissues and possibly organs here the appearance looks charred there's no sensation at all due to the damage that has occurred to the sensory nerves found in the dermis let's review with a checkpoint what term describes the combination of fibrin clots fibroblasts and the extensive network of capillaries and healing tissue feel free to pause the lecture while you work on your response The granulation tissue is composed of these structures. Let's go ahead and try one more. Deodorants are used to mask the effects of secretions from which type of skin gland? Deodorants mask the effects of apocrine sweat gland secretions.